When you're learning free CAD and you start feeling comfortable enough to think to yourself, this isn't so bad, I can finally break free from the shackles of my corporate CAD overlords. Now I'm just going to go back and tweak this sketch a little. After googling, reading the wiki, watching YouTube videos and rage posting in the FreeCAD forum, you start to see a common term appear. Topological naming problem. It sounds really complicated. And you don't want to have to start your design from scratch again. So maybe it's time you just beg forgiveness from the corporate CAD overlords, right? In most cases, this is pretty easy to fix, especially when you understand what the topological naming problem is. So what is it? To easily explain the problem, I'll model up something pretty simple, and I'll create all the sketches directly on faces as I go. Now I've finished this simple part, let's break it. I'll reopen this pocket and adjust the depth so it no longer penetrates the entire width of the object. When I close the pocket, you'll notice that some of the features are definitely not where I put them. I'll undo that last change and let's have a look at what actually happened. From our first pad, we end up with a box that has six faces. Then when we pocket into the side all the way through, we add four more faces. But when the pocket doesn't go all the way through, there's now five extra faces. By adding another face, everything we've attached to a face from this point onwards has a high chance of being offset by at least one. So we can more easily see what's going on, I'm going to turn on the selection view panel this panel allows us to see the names of everything that we have selected. As I change anything in the history of this model that adds or removes faces, we can see that the names of the faces change. This means there's a high chance that anything that references one of these faces, like a sketch drawn directly on a face, is either going to move somewhere you don't want it, or just break entirely. As for how to fix this problem, it's as simple as selecting the sketch that isn't where it's supposed to be, selecting the map mode property, and then clicking this button. Then simply pick the face that you want the sketch to be on. While this is a good simple fix, this does mean that every time you make a breaking change to your model, you'll probably have to go back and change the mapping of sketches onto other faces. And the same goes with chamfers and fillets mapped to edges and sketches that contain references to edges. Speaking of chamfers and fillets, let's break some of them too. I'll undo everything and return the model to where it was at the start. Then I'll pick some edges and chamfer them. If I change the pocket in the same way that I did before, let's see what happens to the chamfer. Now we have an error on the chamfer, so let's open it up and have a look at what's going on. We can see all the edges listed here. By clicking either add or remove, we'll see the selected edges highlighted. Hmm. And we can see that some are missing and some are just absolutely in the wrong spot. I'll add the correct edges and then remove the incorrect ones. Yeah, I know, you don't have to deal with this issue in other CAD packages, so why don't the FreeCAD devs just fix it? Well, to derail this video just a little, it kind of has been fixed. It's just not rolled into the main FreeCAD branch. You may have heard me mention or use a development branch of FreeCAD from the dev known as Real Thunder. If I open this same file in their dev version of FreeCAD, make the exact same change, nothing breaks. Among a whole bunch of other fantastic features, Real Thunder has created a new, robust topological model. It didn't quite make it into version 0.19 though. Not everything in Real Thunder's branch will make it into the main version of FreeCAD, but you can help to get features like this added by downloading Real Thunder's build, using it, and reporting bugs you find. I've put a link to this version in the description. Anyway, now we have to come back to version 0.19 without the fancy new topological model to discuss how to model something that can be changed without anything breaking. If you've been watching my previous videos, you've already been shown how to, just not told why. The premise of this is actually pretty simple. Make your entire model without ever referencing a face, edge, or point on a body. Okay, it's not quite as crazy as it sounds. In most instances, it just means instead of sketching directly on a face, you either sketch on an origin plane and offset the position of the sketch, 
or you create a datum plane and move it to a location that you want your sketch to be. I'll show both of these methods, but you can use whichever one best suits you. I also want to reiterate, you don't actually have to do this. If you're just whipping up a quick model, sketching on faces is fine. But if you're looking to make something flexible or wanting to have something that's really unbreakable, this is definitely the way to do it. If I want to create a sketch on this top face, I can make sure I have no faces selected, then click New Sketch. Select the appropriate plane and then click OK. If you then select the sketch in the tree, under the Attachment and Position Properties, change the Z position to the same height as the face of the pad. If we just enter a number in here, this will mean that any time you want to change the pad height, you also have to change the sketch Z position. To avoid this entirely, let's just make the Z position equal to the pad length. You can click on the formula icon or hit the equals key to open the formula editor. Now just type in the name of the pad, in this case it's just pad, then dot, then length. Now you can close the formula editor. Now if the pad length ever changes, the sketch position also changes with it. Then we can just draw the sketch as usual and then pocket it. To create a datum plane, I find the easiest way is to unhide the origin by selecting it and hitting space to toggle its visibility, then select the relevant plane and click create new datum plane. To move it where you want, you can change any of these offsets or rotations, and you can use the formula editor on any of them like I did to offset the sketch earlier. I'm just going to manually change the Z offset here. Click OK to finish creating the datum plane. Then to draw your sketch, just select the datum plane and create a new sketch. If I create the whole model again using these methods, and we start messing around with the pocket distance again, as expected, the first body breaks, but the new body will happily accept any of the changes we make without any issues. This will all definitely take some getting used to, but it will allow you to make some really robust models in FreeCAD. If you're learning something from my videos and want to see more, you might consider donating through my Patreon. You'll also get to vote on the topic of my future videos, see what I'm working on behind the scenes, and get access to any of the models that I make for the videos, and just some of the other projects that I'm working on. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and definitely look at how you can help or contribute to FreeCAD. All the links are in the video description. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.